Yes, that's it's special. time <laughs> to face <sighs> Nick, Moon, and Samantha. Good morning. Oh, oh, good morning. I'm all, a, I'm all a quiver now. Every time I hear that voice, I'm all a quiver. Oh, <laughs> that's very kind of you. Thank uh, you very much for giving up your time and coming on this morning, Peter. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you very much. There's nothing I like more than getting up at uh, 8 o'clock. o'clock in the morning to talk to I Essex. was up at half five. <laughs> Well, I know, I know. You, you probably had a late night last hey, night. No, I did actually. I watched the BAFTAs on TV, and uh, that was uh, <clears throat> that sent me to sleep immediately. It was wonderful. <laughs> well, we was looking at the the award winners, and I was like, "Oh, what's that film? What's that film? What's yeah. that film?" <laughs> I, watching that watching that uh, that award ceremony reminded me that I really should get out more. You know, <laughs> I, I hadn't seen any of those. I know. I mean, I was sat there, and I was like, "What can I do?" And I thought, oh, "There's nothing on television," so I ended up watching reruns of Friends <laughs> <laughs> on Eve. <laughs> On E4! E4! Yes. <laughs> um, when I introduced... I haven't introduced you yet. Sorry, I've got this nice little introduction I had all prepared. Oh, go on. Let me hear it. I, I, I'm going to lie back now and listen okay. to this. Now on Mad Breakfast, it's time to introduce a broadcasting legend, a hero of mine, and an all-round top bloke. Uh, you may not know the name, and to be fair, you probably won't know his face, but you will know the voice. Uh, famous for introducing acts on The X Factor as the come-on-down voice on The Price is Right, Britain's Got Talent, and the legendary promos on E4, it's time Time to introduce a voiceover man, Peter Dixon. That was the big intro. <laughs> oh, that was well, quite impressive. Wonderful. It was almost as if I wrote that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I should be don't, your agent. Don't let them in on that, Peter. <laughs> um, I introduced you. I said people probably wouldn't know your face. Um, does that disappoint you if you're walking down the street and you're not mobbed like um, Simon Cowell and Dermot O'Leary? Oh, good heavens above, no, not at all. Uh, I, I, one of the joys of doing what I do as, as, a, as an audio artist is that I can walk out um, um, in, onto the street and nobody knows who I am. I actually quite value that. Uh, I, I, I do have um, some famous friends, and when we do go out together, uh, I'm, uh, you know, obviously you, you're in a restaurant or something, people will always come up to them and ask them for autographs, and, and it's all very nice and everything, but do you not I actually quite value my privacy. You know, I, I live a, a life of relative obscurity, but um, at the same time, I'm, you know, my voice is, as you say, is quite well, well known. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, when you go to the shops, obviously, to buy something and you, like, someone talks to you, as soon as you open your voice, do so they go, oh, are you that man? Well, not at all, because uh, my ordinary, my, my, the voice I'm speaking to you with now is not the voice that I use for some of the... Uh, well, but the, the, I think you're assuming that you're referring to the big character voice I uh, yeah. just uh, did earlier on. I don't know, if I went around like that and talked like this in the shops and ordered pints of milk and packets of fags, people would think I was mad. <laughs> well, that's clear that one of the other questions I had. Do, do you use that voice around the house? But obviously, yeah. that is just a big characterization. Yeah. No, yes, I do. I do use it around the house quite a lot. I, I shout things out like Rachel Adadeji. Oh, I love that. That's that. <laughs> and I, there's nothing nice than a bit of Adadeji in the morning, is there? Really? <laughs> Rachel Adadeji. I love it, love it. That's I mean, a brilliant name. It just clears the pipes. You should try that some morning before you start working. Oh, start. oh he does, Nick does. <laughs> yes, when I'm off on air, I'm sitting... Oh, you sing- could try Iridian if you wanted. Iridian Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> I did do... Um, I have made a nice little sort of jingle. I did ask your permission if I could do a very bad parody of you and do a, uh, a jingle. Did you manage to catch it this morning? Uh, no, I didn't, Would you like to... Would, would you like I to would me? love to hear it, yes. prom- As long as you promise not to sue me if it's that, that bad. There's no promise there. <laughs> no, there's no promise. No, no, I'm just, just on the other line now. It's the lawyer. Hang on a second. <laughs> OK, I shall play it now for you. Hopefully it's going to work. Live from Burnham. E4 Shouty Man's lesser known twin brother. Introducing the Mad Breakfast Show on Saint 94.7 with your hosts Nick Moon and Samantha Shaw. Now it's time to listen to the music. 
<laughs> there you go. That's that's my attempt at being you. He's laughing. That can only be a uh, good sign. Oh, he's over laughing because he's thinking I'm going to get lots of money now by suing you. Oh, <laughs> no, not at all. No, it's a very complimentary. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> it took me ages to do that. I've still got to do it again. I uh, couldn't believe the amount of times I ended up in a coughing fit trying to do that voice. Yes, I know. It's a bit, everybody who tries to do it always end up, ends up on the floor. Yeah, I mean, true. Samantha barged in and I was sort of, my eyes were watering and I was, as I was <laughs> cough, coughing. I wonder what the hell he'd been up to. <laughs> Um, you are affectionately described in the press as shouty man. I call you shouty man. I hope it's not an offensive term, because you do shout. I, um, do, I do shout all, a, rather a lot, yes, I do, yeah. When did you realise that you had a voice that would be ideal for, like, voiceovers and for broadcasting? Well, um, actually, when I was... I guess I must have been about uh, 18 at the time, uh, 17 or 18, and uh, I was just about to go to university, and I was... Um, I, before I went to the to, to university, I was helping out uh, at the university film club. We made little films, okay. you know, 16 millimeter films, documentaries, and so on. One of the guys that helped us out there was a BBC cameraman. He helped in his spare time, and he, uh, I narrated a documentary for him. And he thought I, he must have thought I was okay. I did okay on it, so because he said uh, they're, they're actually looking for someone to read the news uh, uh, for uh, late night radio uh, down at the BBC. Do you want to audition for it? So I said okay. And uh, I auditioned for the uh, for the part or the um, the job, and um, and got it. To much of my amazement, was offered the job, and uh, so I started working for the BBC at the age of seventeen or eighteen, I think it was, uh, in a part time capacity, just uh, just between leaving school and going to university, which was amazing, an amazing ex- amazing experience, you know, to have that so young. I mean, well, we're we're enjoying it here. Obviously, I mean, Saint FM is a, a not for profit organisation, so we get tons and tons of volunteers. And uh, I'm actually enjoying it. This is my first sort of experience at radio. Yeah. It's yours as well, Samantha. It is indeed, yeah. But you want to be in TV, don't you? Yeah, I'm a graduate, fresh out of university. I, I actually make, made documentaries myself too, Peter. Do um, you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wonderful, um, wonderful. Um, my boyfriend did the voiceover for my uh, latest documentary. Any tips for him on becoming oh, a famous even, voiceover uh, man? Uh, no, I wouldn't presume to give anybody any tips. Uh, I... Uh, I'm still learning myself, actually. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't mean that in, in, a, in, a, in any sort of uh, pretentious way, but I do actually still consider myself to be, you know, learning the job because every every day I learn something new about what I can do or what, what I should be doing. So when did the, the big voice come? When when? The, well, that big shouty voice. Uh, well, that started. I guess the very first uh, outing for him was on Steve Wright's show in. Um, when, he, when Steve moved from afternoons to breakfast, which would have been in the early 90s, uh, yeah, I, remember Steve I, I did a character called Voiceover Man on that show. And uh, Steve's an Essex boy. He uh, grew up in Rayleigh. So he, he, um, he had me on there. Well, I was working with him on the afternoon show as well, doing characters. I did Mr. Mad and various other characters for his afternoon show, telephone characters. And then when he moved to breakfast, I did this character called Voiceover Man, which was a more, it was a lighter toned voice. So it was more up here, you know, like a smiley voice. <laughs> yes, that's right. And there's a bouncy castle for the kids. <laughs> and, uh, but, he, but he also had a very dark side to him, which I quite liked. The fact that his voice was very smiley and bright, but at the, at the other extreme, his personality was quite dark and uh, dangerous but um but, but then um <clears throat> he i put him back in the box and he, he, he stayed there until uh, about three years ago when pat allen died who was um a lovely character actor from the sort of the 60s and 70s and uh, he had found a resurgence in his career by becoming the promo voice for e4 which mm-hmm. is the youth channel for e4 and Patrick Allen, as many of your listeners will know, was the uh, the voice on Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, I remember Frankie uh, Goes to tribes. Hollywood. He, he was the voice of, in fact, if there had been a nuclear war, if Russia had issued that strike against us back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, uh, Pat's voice would have been the last voice you probably would have heard on the radio. Oh. Because, um, I mean, it's quite a chilling fact that the BBC had in its vault in Broadcasting House in London, a, a reel of quarter-inch tape, which the duty manager um, on the, of the day would have been instructed by Her Majesty's Government to put on in across room. all networks, which instructed people to, um, you know, to get uh, under their kitchen tables and to pull their curtains and, um, you know... Dive under the table. And, and uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, not that that would have done any good. No, uh, but, for uh, about five seconds. But Patrick's voice, yeah, it was a very chilling, authoritarian, commanding voice that he had, and... 
Sadly, Patrick died three years ago, and uh, I was uh, very sad uh, when that happened, and because uh, I'd known him and worked with him as well, and uh, on, on various things. And um, E4 then went on to try and find somebody else to, to fill his shoes, which wasn't easy. And uh, the uh, creative director at E4 had uh, been a big fan of um, of uh, Reeves and Mortimer, and I'd done a, sh a show with them. And uh, with Patrick, incidentally, and, and, and they thought my voice might have fit, might fit the bill. So they asked me in anyway, to cut a long story short, they asked me into audition and I got the job. And I was so delighted and pleased to, to you know, to have taken over from Patrick. And uh, and I hope I've been able to put my own kind of stamp on it. Well, I think I think from the very first time we anyone heard that voice on E4, that's that was it. I mean, instant fame issued for you. Oh, that, that's very, very sweet of you to say that. And then also, the um, uh, around about the same time, actually about six years ago, I think it was, just, no, it was slightly before uh, E4, I was doing um, The X Factor in that kind of big voice as well. You know, the, uh, so The X Factor came first and then... Yeah, yeah, The X Factor was there first and then, then E4 came afterwards. Um, so, um, yeah, just it's amazing how much that voice resonates with, with the British public. You know, I don't know why. It's a funny thing, isn't it? It's just very loved and very um I, I can't quite describe what what it is about it it's just it's just one I of those things that resonates loved is good people. enough yeah so x factor britain's got talent e4 to name but a few of those shows yeah. which one do you get most pleasure from recording all, all of them actually they're all different um, I, I, th I mean that's not the only voice i do i do loads of other things i do xbox and playstation games where i play russian yes, you military know, officers i play fable, isn't it? yeah fable yes. i play zombies and uh, you know all kinds of uh, princes and then i play world war ii pilots and uh, generals and um I do a lot of documentaries as well. I didn't actually realise about the Fable thing until I read it on your website and I went back and played it and it's like, ah, yes it is. You can hear it then, can't yes. you? Yeah. <laughs> My partner spends hours playing that game. Yeah, I've never played it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got a question from uh, Nick Skeens, which is one of our other presenters here. He does the Purple programme on uh, Thursday mornings. Um, Saint Them has a lot of good voices who might be able to make money out of voiceovers. How do you get your work considered and who do you contact and things like that is there like a general agency that deals with voiceover people yeah good question uh there isn't a general agency that deals with voiceover people um i only wish there was but there is um the the, the, the sort of well tried and tested route is to um well first of all is to create a demo cd so that's um your voice and not you doing impressions of other voices. It's your it's your voice that people would be interested in. So just speaking and, normally. And, and, or and, and actually, Nick, the other <clears throat> thing to remember is that um, if you're using your voice to make money and you, you're going to sort of communicate ideas to people, uh, it's important to remember that it's not. You should never think of, of your voice as not being beautiful. Everyone's voice is beautiful and unique in its own way. And everybody has within them the potential to be a uh, you know, to communicate with their voice, to be a voice artist. And so some people dismiss themselves as being, oh, I couldn't do that because my voice isn't beautiful enough, which is absolute rubbish. Um, the 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 most important thing to remember is that it's how you use your voice that's that's the important thing. So um, you know, it's it's all to do with flow and emphasis and cadence and rhythm and intonation, rather than the fact that maybe you might talk with a voice like that. <laughs> Uh, because even if you talk with a voice like that, you know, you can probably still get work. For the Mr. Muscle advert. But you wouldn't so get very much work. You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, Mr. Muscle would be, would be great for, for that voice. But what I'm saying is, you know, is that you don't have to have the voice beautiful. But, uh, you yeah, know, so the thing is to do a CD, uh, to do a demo CD of your voice, re uh, and really your voice, um, and make it no more than literally 60 seconds to, to, to one and a half minutes long, um, and send it as round to um, the, the agents that you would want to represent you, and you can find them on the internet. Excellent. And they, they always listen to them, and um, you know they'll give you some feedback. Excellent. Mm, great advice. That, Thanks, Matt. That's answered uh, Nick's question. Um, you you know you've hit the big time when you appear on Harry Hill's TV burp, <laughs> and I know you appeared on his TV burp recently, didn't you, Peter? Many times. Yeah, I've been <laughs> I've been on Harry Hill's TV burp, but. Well, the last two series, I think. We're doing currently doing a thing called uh, The K Factor on there, which is uh, yep. uh, yes. a ridiculous pastiche of The X Factor, where Harry is looking for 
uh, knitted characters to uh, come oh, on Oh, yes, the, the knitted character, yes, yeah. he appears everywhere. Yeah. But apparently you pronounced Cheryl Cole wrongly. I did, yes, yes. And he put it on the big screen. I did, I know. How embarrassing is that? <laughs> Poor um, woman, as if she needs any more. Oh, I know, <laughs> sir. I mean, have you? Oh, the other thing, have you seen the the Facebook group, uh, Sausage Roll or Cheryl Cole? No, I haven't. Uh, there, there's a face. There's a Facebook group saying, <laughs> "Can this Sausage Roll get more fans than Cheryl Cole?" And they're not. The, the Sausage Roll's got over a million fans at the moment, so he's not doing too bad. Yeah. Um, your podcast on Kaboosh. Dot net. Yes. Uh, it's a lifestyle portal from the National Union of Students. Yes, it is indeed. Yes. It's a very good website. I had, uh, I've listened to uh, both of your podcasts on there. Um, you interviewed Lord Dermot O'Leary and the excellent JLS. Uh, who would be your ideal guest to interview, past or present, and what would you ask them? Oh, well, I still want to get Simon on there. Mr. Cow. Yeah, yeah, he'd be great to have on there. I'd love to <clears throat> have half an hour of his time to talk to him. But it's so, so hard to pin him down because... He, He's just so Barbados. madly busy at the moment because he's he's currently trying to get the X Factor launched in America, and uh, you can imagine how much work is involved in that. And that he's got just so much going on business wise that you know just to get half an hour, even to get five minutes with him, is impossible. Almost, you know, so it's um, I still like to get him on there. I would try Barbados. That's probably a safe. Uh, I should probably. <laughs> have, I'll probably have to. Yeah. Um, that actually leads on to another question we had for you. He's um, Simon's off to the states to do the X Factor. Um, are you going to get going with him and doing your re- redoing your famous phrase? Ah well, um, I, I, that is still yet to be decided, uh, Nick. And. Um, we're still looking at the uh, the possibility of doing that, but it's a imagine. question of whether or not um, I wouldn't want to sort of go decamp over there. So we'd have to do it from here. Um, and there's all there's ways of doing that on ISDN lines. Yeah, over technology the is brilliant now. So. But uh, but that's not a problem. The problem may be that the um, with the time difference, you know, the the yes, eight you'd hour, have to do it like sort of. Well, a lot of the, lot of the, the could, I mean, it could be pre-recorded, but if there's a change or anything, and I'm, you know, yeah, some, someone drops out or something drops like that, out yeah. and I'm in bed, or what do you, what do you do? <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine some American voice doing it though. That's the thing; it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be the same. If it's like X Factor with Simon Cowell, and then someone goes, yeah, "It's the X Factor." I know, I know. I it's, it's not good. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, oh, where was so that? the other day, I downloaded uh, your app, Peter. Yeah, oh. uh, Peter Dixon's Pocket Announcer. Now I must say it's quite addictive. Thank you very much, Samantha. This is my new big project. I'm so pleased you mentioned it because uh, I'm very proud of it, actually. It's done really well. I, I um, had so many people had been asking me over the last year or two to record their uh, voicemail message and to, to put something on yeah. their phone. That, um, I'm very happy to do that, by the way. If, you know, if anybody sees me, I'm quite, I, I love doing that. <laughs> But I can't do everybody, obviously. So I thought, well, I'll do an iPhone app that will do just that. So um, I've got a, I've got this app that's just been released. And hey, you know, within 24 hours, it was number one in the entertainment chart of the Apple Store, and it's number six, number five or six globally at the moment on on the App Store, which is fantastic. Well, it's you not know. bad considering it's a week. Just a few days, not yep. even a week. Oh, not even it was, a week. It was released on Thursday of last week. So, I mean, to get that far in that short space of time is, is uh, unbelievable. Samantha has been playing with it all morning. I'm and, uh, we have been sitting yes, here I've been chuckling. playing with mine all morning as well. <laughs> <laughs> and the iPhone app's nice. not bad either. Uh, no, it's, yeah, I mean, having fun with the sentence maker. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. You, you can create an infinite number of sentences. Yeah, you can sentences. indeed. I've tried. Oh, are we allowed to play one? You but can play them, yes. I, I've said to people... Have you not got it set up, Samantha? No, I've not got it oh. set up. Have you got any set up yet, darling? It's, oh. in, it's in a rain bag. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Dance around your handbag. So we'll be about six hours while she dives into her handbag to find things. thing. Well, next question. <laughs> right, I'll give you a next question and we'll come back to that one. Um, where am I? Oh, my next question was about the app. So Yeah, I was just going to say, if, 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 if you do want to try it out, go to the app store, look for Peter Dixon's Pocket Announcer. Um, and uh, you won't regret it. It's, um, I think it's a quid or something. It's well, well worth it. It's fantastic. It's, yeah. hu- it's a huge thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I created last that's, night. That's the one, Samantha. I, I'm, I haven't got an iPhone. If I did, I think you would never see me again. I would be sitting there playing with that. Well, listen, day. Nick, I have some good news for you, too, and for indeed for anybody else who doesn't have an iPhone. Uh, in mid-April, I'm going to be um, launching my own uh, e-commerce website. Uh, and uh, this, again, was in response to demand. For people saying, oh, I haven't got an iPhone. I need, I want, I'd like to have some, some, some stuff. So you'll be able to go on there and um, 
download uh, your favorite uh, 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 voicemail ringtone and uh, text alert messages and and another and also to order up bespoke stuff so if you want something want me to say something for you specifically whether it be for a wedding or whatever you know you can just go on there and, and order it and type out your own message and send it to me and I'll send it back to you excellent I think I'll yeah, just go and buy people will be looking forward to that I think I'll just go and buy an iPhone though because I <laughs> that, to say, it, I, 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 Samantha's going to lose it after the, after the show because I'm going to be sitting playing with it for about an hour <laughs> It is. I mean, it obviously took a lot, a lot of time to actually sit and record because there's a lot of words on there. Thousands and thousands of words and phrases. Yeah, it took forever to do. God, it was, uh, it was a labour of love. But uh, well, it was worth, worth it. it. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I noticed, I was looking at your, your biog on your website. Um, you've got a degree in psychology. Yes, I do, yes. But don't <laughs> ask me anything about it because I've forgotten it all now. I was just about to say, about how did you go from psychology to either radio or broadcasting? Well, in those days, I mean, I'm uh, going back a bit now. This was, um, I, I guess, the um, late 70s. Um, I don't think there was such a thing as a media course in the 70s. There may have been. I think there were film courses, but uh, uh, I don't recall seeing anything to do with media, which I'd love to have done. But actually, Nick, I don't think it really matters what you do at university. Um, oh, it's, not even <laughs> vital. it's not even vital that you go to it. I mean, I think far too many people go to university nowadays that shouldn't really be there. Um, so, I, for you've I, wasted I just, the last three years. Oh, thanks. I just don't think it's right for everyone, you know. I mean, uh, it's the same, though. I think when you leave with A-levels and you still can't get a job, there's, there's no jobs out there. It doesn't guarantee anything, does it? Well, so? even if you leave university with a, with a first-class de- honours degree, uh, there's, there's no guarantee of a job either, you know. Uh, it's not the, the, the be-all and end-all route. No, I haven't managed to find a job, so I'm on St. FM, filling my time up. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm glad you, you're doing something, though. Yes. You, so you're, you're developing your career in, in, in a very good and positive way. Good. Uh, we're going to finish things off with a quick fire round. You did this on Thursday with Rich and Gemma on the on the. Um, yes, it's time for the quick fire round. <laughs> Hopefully, I've picked out different ones. So here we go. We will start the quick fire round now. Marmite, love or hate it? Love it. X Factor or Britain's Got Talent? X Factor. Ant or Deck? Ant. Chips or roast potatoes? Chips. Java cakes or Jamie Dodgers? Java cakes. Money or happiness? Happiness. Beer or wine? Wine. Cheryl Cole or Danny Minogue? Danny. <laughs> EastEnders or Corey? Neither. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> the cup, half empty or half full? Half full. Sports car or people carrier? Sports car. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Channel 4 or E4? E4. Oh, excellent. That's the quick fire round. Just one more thing. Um, I did email you this, but could you please say you're listening to The Mad Breakfast Show with Nick and Samantha on Saint 94.7 FM for us? You're listening to The Mad Breakfast Show with Nick and Samantha on 94.7 FM. Excellent. Thank you very much, Peter, for giving up your time. Oh, it's been wet, delightful. Wet and miserable Monday morning. Oh, what morning. a ghastly morning. Sorry to all, you, all your listeners who are uh, trying to battle through the snow this morning. It's horrible. Oh, have you got snow? We've got, we've got rain snow at the here. here in Burnham. No, we've got snow here in, in lovely sunny Buckinghamshire, yes. Mm, oh, well, the perhaps the snow won't be heading this way. Um, you can, Live weather report from Buckinghamshire, then. Yes. <laughs> you can check out Peter's podcast on kabush.net. Uh, when is the next one up on P- Peter? Because we had JLS uh, last uh, week, it'll, wasn't it? The next one will be... Uh, in fact, I'm doing it this to be Jason uh, Derulo. Ooh, what you say? We, we like Jason Derulo here. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much, Peter. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much, guys. Cheers. Thanks thank for coming you. on. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.